So the biggest driver is going to be 5G. It's the next generation of mobile technology, and it's more than just another G. It's going to make a significant change to how uh, we operate as an industry, but how UK PLC operates too. Interesting. And, and what are some of the things that you're doing to, to adapt to these changes? Well, there's a number of things you have to do for 5G. Obviously, you have to make sure you're in a good place, and that's about spectrum and working with the vendors to make sure that you can roll the infrastructure out. We're also working with the government. It will be a different kind of infrastructure to make 5G successful, and that includes rural coverage to make sure it covers more of the UK to deliver those services, but also urban coverage. So things like small cells and how they would fit in a big metropolitan city like London. So those are the infrastructure things we're doing, but also starting to work with digital startups because it's the services that, that make 5G come to life. As much as the infrastructure is important, it will be the services that people consume that will make the biggest difference. And customers will be producing a whole variety of data and information through a broad array of terminals and devices. Is it your intention that you'll be using this information to hyper-personalise the services that you're providing to customers? Uh, we already look to personalise um, services to individuals. Um, so, so yes, one of the great things about the amount of data that 5G will bring is that we can offer services to customers related to them, where they are and when they want to consume them, which I think makes it unique. The challenge for brands that are telco is how do you create that relationship that gives customers the confidence to want to consume your services? And that's going to be one of the biggest opportunities for any telco, is change that relationship from a service provider to more of a digital assistant and a digital companion. And all of that does sound really great, but today, um, a person's phone, a person's computer, or, or any device for that matter, can be hacked. So with that in mind, how do, you, how do you surmount the challenge that ultimately it sounds like our whole life can be hacked? How do you address uh, the challenges of privacy and also security? Well, let's do security first. So absolutely, and it's very important that security is embedded in the 5G standard because you're you know, hacking into uh, someone's uh, PS4 account is one thing. Hacking into someone's car is it's automatically driving down the road is a completely different thing. So it has to be written into the, the standards from day one. We're actively involved in making sure that happens. And then if I talk about those wider um, incubators, well, we've actually got a wider incubator with GCHQ. And that's about how do you put security at the heart of the services you can offer customers? How do you make their security something that you can create a relationship with? So security is vital for the success of 5G. But then privacy is a completely uh, another thing altogether. And for us, privacy is a matter of choice. So we don't want to take data from you that you don't want to give us. We want to give you the choice and how you want to interact with that data. Because at the end of the day, it's the customer or the business's data. So we want to give you the choice and the control. But back to my earlier point, if we can demonstrate value, we are going to encourage you to make those choices to, to help us, help either you as a person or you as a business. And if we come back to hacking and, and how it's going to be combated, what do you think the, the single biggest thing is that needs to be changed? I, I don't think it's a single thing. Uh, I really don't. I think um, you need to constantly evolve uh, your system security and your infrastructure security because you know the criminals who want to break in are constantly doing that too. So that's just a constant race. But also you need to make sure that people are aware because if your systems start to become more difficult, it's a bit like cars. So people don't break into cars now. They tend to break into houses to get keys to get into cars, because that's the next weak link. So education, so that everybody's aware of what they are doing and are not doing safely with their own data, and then helping them feel comfortable and safe. So privacy is about, yes, it is about security, it's about choice, and it's about education.